Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the word. Let's move on. Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. The Bible says, while I was thinking about the horns, here it comes, watch, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them. And three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully, meaning blasphemous. So this little horn rising up is the Antichrist. At first he seems small and irrelevant, kind of out of sight. He will emerge out of this final world empire and will rise up to become the leader and the, the, the leader of the fourth and the final beast. Also, three of these ten nations or empires or kingdoms will be uprooted or overthrown. Maybe they're not going to go along with his program. Maybe they're going to rebel. But he's going to overthrow three out of ten of the kingdoms. Now, one distinguishing characteristics of the little horn is that it had a mouth that boast, uh, spoke boastfully, which matches the mouth that utters proud words and blasphemies which is the Antichrist in Revelation 13, 5. We're going to look at that in a minute. But also, Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, if you put that up, this is what Paul writes about the Antichrist. He says, He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple. Now, how many of you know there's no temple in Jerusalem right now? It was destroyed in 70 AD. There's still no temple there. But how many of you know there's an organization in Jerusalem called the Temple Institute who have already completely refabricated a Jewish temple including all the utilities, all the ornaments, the laver, the, the, um, everything except the Ark of the Covenant, which they believe they know where the original one is, buried under the Dome of the Rock. Not only that, they've recreated the Sanhedrin. They're all ready to go. All they need is a signature on a dotted line, as we'll read in Daniel 9, 27, at that point, listen, church, it will only be months before a new temple is built in Jerusalem. I'm telling you, we're right on the doorstep. My God. So Paul writes, he will oppose everything and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped. So that he sets himself up in God's temple. It's come in that temple. Proclaiming himself to be God. Or as Daniel put it, he will utter proud words. Jump to Revelation 3, 5 and 8. Let me draw some parallels for you here this morning. We're almost done. Uh, verse 5 says, The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies. This is John writing. And to exercise its authority for 42 months, that's three and a half years, he will have power. Verse 6, it opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name, watch this now, and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. While we're in heaven, huh, worshiping, around the throne with all the angels and the 24 elders the devil's still going to be cursing us here on earth verse 7 it watched it was given to him 
right? This is talking about the Antichrist. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people. This is the Jewish people that are left on earth during the tribulation period. Remember, the tribulation is about the salvation of the Jewish nation. The church is not present in the tribulation period. Somebody right there should thank God. Watch this. In your Bible, there's three different kinds of wraths. One is man's wrath. How many of you suffered under man's wrath at some point in life? The second kind is God's, or I'm sorry, is the devil's wrath. How many of you suffered under the devil's wrath sometimes? The third kind, oh my God, is God's wrath. We don't suffer under God's wrath. Revelation verse or chapter 6 through 19, the tribulation period, is all about God's wrath. God isn't about to put you, honey, under his wrath for seven years. He's going to snatch you up out of here. Come on, somebody in the house of Judah. We see God, what Jesus says, as was in the days of Lot, as was in the days of Noah. He gave us two examples of God's wrath in both instances. The people of God were removed before God's wrath hit. Come on, y'all. This is good doctrine. This is good teaching for you. That's why Paul says, encourage one another with these words that you're going to be raptured up out of here. How would that be? My encourage you well you're gonna to have to go through hell through seven years how encouraging is that but that's now listen there's a difference between God's wrath and persecution the church is being persecuted right now honey big time they're hanging Christians in Afghanistan right now we have friends in Nigeria that contact attack me they're under severe assault from uh, Islam from the Muslims. It's persecution is going on in Australia, in our neighbor to the north in Canada. They're locking pastors up. Does somebody hear what I'm saying here this morning? It's only time before it comes to the United States of America. My God. Verse 6, it opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place. He's going to curse heaven and us who live there. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. Because they're going to be conquered for a hot minute in the book of Revelation. The uh, Jewish people. And it was given authority over every tribe, every people every language, in every nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not. I hope you all heard that. All the inhabitants, the devil's going to have power over all the inhabitants of the earth. They're all going to worship the beast, all whose names have not been written. In the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the, crea from the creation of the world. So here's the question, Judah. Is your name huh, written in the Lamb's book of life? That's the question here this morning. I'm not asking you if you belong to a church. Uh, is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Honey, if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, my Bible tells me you won't worship him. Amen. Why? Once again, you won't be here. Here's my last scripture. I'm going to wrap this up. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Trying to tie these scriptures together. Revelation 13. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Daniel 7. Watch. Verse 5, don't you remember? Now Paul's writing to the Thessalonians. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you about these things? And now you know what is holding him back. All right, let's decipher that. First of all, who's him? Speaking of the Antichrist. And you know who's holding him back. Who's holding him back? It's the church of Jesus Christ. Listen, honey, let me straighten out your theology here for just a hot minute. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit in the church. Because the Holy Spirit will never leave the earth. That's how people are going to get saved during the tribulation period. It's because of the work of the Holy Spirit through 144,000 Jews plus two witnesses. Come on, if you're with me, somebody say amen. So it's the church. We are the restraint. Listen, we, Jesus said you're the salt of the earth. What does salt do? It retards spoilage. I want you just to think about this. Could you imagine once the church is removed from this earth, first of all, there's going to be a whole lot of folks partying that the church is gone. Oh, y'all missed that right there. Because let me tell you something. We're still a thorn in a whole lot of people's flesh. Because righteousness is still being preached. Y'all with me? But honey, the moment that the restraint, the moment that you and I are removed from this earth, I'm telling you, all hell will break out on this earth like nothing they have ever seen. No restraint. Don't you remember that when I was with you? I used to tell you these things, Paul said. And now you know what is holding him back. So watch that he may be revealed at the proper time. Listen, that devil can't do anything without our God. Our God reigns. He calls the shots. He calls the day and the time. Until the proper time, there's a proper time coming. We don't know the day or the hour, but Jesus said you'll surely know the season. Come on, y'all know we're living in that season. Verse 7, watch. For the secret power of lawlessness huh, is already at work. How many can say amen there? Do you see the lawlessness throughout our nation, throughout the world? It's not only here in America. They're just beating people down in Australia because they don't want to uh, get the jab. I'm going to watch my mouth here so we don't get deleted off YouTube. Because they don't want to get the jab, they're beating people down. Because they don't want to be mandated. Listen, I'm going to say this a hundred times if I have to. If you feel the necessity to have a shot, by all means, do it. But please don't sit up in your ivory tower, which you've lied to me from day one about this whole deal, and then try to mandate it on me. Oh, I'm trying not to preach, y'all, but this is like fire shot up in my bones, y'all. <laughs> For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so, church. Until we are taken out of the way. Somebody say, and then. The lawless one will be revealed. But here's the end of the story. Whom the Lord, Jesus Christ, will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. I wish somebody in this house would put their hands together and give our great God a praise. to 
proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to every nation. Proclaim the gospel of Jesus.